What's up everybody? My name is Nancy and I love pool. So how does an amateur even start using English, let alone bringing it into their game? Or how do you even aim with it? It feels really foreign and especially when your cue stick is just aimed out into Mars, but I hope to shed some light on that. I'm going to talk about some of the basics of it so that people that are starting out can start to begin to conceptualize it. So if you're interested in getting started to use it, but not sure how, this is the right place. To start, there's centerball English and side English. So centerball English deals with all shots that are shots along the midline of the cue ball. Anything to the right and left are side English. So these can obviously be combined, top right, bottom left, this is called Bruce Lee Pie English. No, I'm kidding. There's no name for it, and I don't think there is. For beginners, you can generally think of center ball English as affecting where the cue ball will hit the first rail after it hits the object ball. And side English is something that affects where the cue ball will hit the second rail after it hits the first rail, after it hits the object ball. What's special about side English is that it takes effect after it hits the rail. This is because this is the greatest source of friction that really allows the side English to shine. So an inside side English shot is where the cue stick is pointed in the direction of the object ball. And an outside English shot is where the cue stick is pointed away from the object ball. And for you better players, I know that side English has minute effects on the path of the cue ball, particularly when it comes to soft soft shots, drag shots, etc. Draw shots too. And then there are other factors such as masse and, and stuff like that, but I'm keeping this simple. So, so that's English in a nutshell. Uh, now I'm going to talk about a couple shots where side English um, really comes in handy. First one is rail positioning. These shots run notoriously close to perpendicular to the rail, especially if the shot is pretty thin and top or bottom English won't get you far, but side English will. Number two, those pretty straight shots, but not quite straight. Another area where English shines. You're way too straight on this shot and need an angle to get to the next ball. English is a lot of help here, and with an object ball, a surefire pocket, this will help you get the shot you need to get to the next ball. But before you start adding English to every shot, there's a catch uh, that I quickly learned. So number one, it will screw up your aim. And what I mean by that is that there's an adjustment to be made to, do, to account for squirt. And the more English you put, the more it will squirt. If you don't know what squirt is, it's basically the same thing as deflection. It's where you hit a cue ball on the left side and it will squirt a little bit or deflect to the right side and vice versa with the other side. There are low deflection shafts that kind of help minimize this, but there is no such thing as abs absolutely zero deflection. Not to mention the visual alignment learning curve that you'll have to go through when you're aiming with side English because you, let's face it, your cue stick looks like it's going to freaking Alaska. Also, different stroke speeds deflect differently. Number two, you will notice some new and bewildering cue ball behavior. It will run or it will get stunted. So these are normal and it's a natural phenomena of the friction of the rail acting on the cue ball, pushing it along its path or deflecting it. So getting used to the right stroke speed will also take some time. So with squirt, and or deflection. Naturally, this will give you some inaccuracies in your pocketing abilities. So I would do this at home when you're practicing or when you're not in a match. But after a while, you get used to it. If you're a genius, unlike myself, you could develop some highly sophisticated, you know, front hand, back hand English system that factors in very, very calculated arm movement incrementations that counter squirt references to these geniuses below. So I listed some drills that got me started with English. Number one is an English scratch drill. This is to build a familiarity with different amounts of English and it's a good place to start. I did this every morning for about two or three weeks, got the feel for it. Uh, you don't have to do it forever. And there, there's a good reference video that I listed below by Brandon Billiard Guy with um, some more drills. Number two, the wagon wheel. So you basically set up a rail cut shot and using varying amounts of side English, see where the cue ball goes. I hated this drill 
hated because I was too harsh on myself. I tried really hard, hard to hit every single ball, but then I did it a couple times and I never did it again. I would not do that. I would take it easy and just kind of get familiar with where the cue ball is going. So number three is a variation of the wagon wheel drill. It's a cut shot and you use different amounts of English to kind of manipulate the cue ball's path. So I recommend trying it out. You know, like it's kind of hard to do, but when it you get that perfect landing, oh yeah, fills you with that feeling of, mm, yeah. Mm. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's wrong makeup. All right, so thanks for watching my stupid little video. I uh, hope it was informative. Peace.